Hello, welcome to a demo on managing and configuring ASN 9000 using Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller. This is Pat Patel, Technical Marketing Engineer, Cisco. Typically, the workloads often require communication with services outside of the data center domain in a data center fabric. This also includes users accessing application and services from the internet and WAN. The VXLAN EVP and data center's border devices are considered as a handoff point for North to South communication. This device is generally peer with IOS XR routers, often viewed as backbone routers for the WAN and internet connectivity. With DCNM11, an admin has complete control over the VXLAN EVPN fabric leveraging DCNM capabilities such as monitoring, automation, and compliance. While the support for IOS XR based routers is limited with basic monitoring in an unmanaged mode. Today, admins are looking for a single controller based solution to manage and automate configurations required between these devices to ensure a symmetric and compliant configuration for communication between different services. Starting Cisco Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller Release 1201, admins can now manage IOS XR routers from an automation and compliance point of view. A new set of templates and policies are introduced to automate and manage eBGP VRF light handoff between the Nexus border switches and the IOS XR edge routers. It is important to note that NDFC performs compliance checks of IOS XR device just the way it does for Nexus switches in an external fabric. Now let us see how we can onboard and configure IOS XR routers in managed mode using Cisco Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller. Before you begin, please ensure that a VXLAN EVPN fabric with border devices and a VRF is up and running. Next, we'll be creating a new fabric. In the LAN fabric section, click on Actions and Create Fabric. Specify a name of a fabric and then select the template type. In our case, we'll be using an external fabric template. As part of the template parameters, provide a BGP ASN and uncheck the fabric monitor option. This ensures that devices part of this fabric template will be in manage mode. We can keep rest of the settings as default. Once all these changes are made, click on save. Now we'll be adding a device in this fabric. For that, double click on the newly created fabric and navigate to the switches tab. Click on actions and add switches. Provide the management IP address of the IOS XR router. In the device type, make sure to select the IOS XR. Now finally provide the username and password for the discovery process. It is important to ensure that the IOS XR device has the IP reachability to NDFC along with the SNMP configuration for the discovery. And then finally click on Discover Switches. Make sure that NDFC displays the status as manageable and finally add the device. Upon successful discovery, the device is onboarded. Verify the role of the device. By default, the IOS XR router supports the role of edge router. Next, navigate to the Links tab to view the connected devices. As seen in the link window, there is an Ethernet interface connectivity between the border of AZ1 Varodra and the edge router of WAN fabric. Next step is to create the VRF light IFC from the EZ fabric where the Nexus border device resides. Minimize this fabric and open the EZ fabric. Go to the links tab and find the links which is connected to the WAN device. Select the concerned link and go to actions and edit the link. In the parameter section, fill out the IP address details. The auto deploy flag is not applicable as the remote device is non Nexus and then click on save. The next step is to extend a VRF. For that, navigate to the VRF tab and then VRF attachments. Select the VRF that is deployed on the border devices and edit it. 
In the extend field, please make sure to select the VRF light as an option. And in the extension, simply click on attach all. And then save. Once the VRF light IFC link is saved, next step is to deploy the configuration on the border device. For this, select the VRF attachment on the border, go to actions and click on deploy. At this point, the configuration compliance will perform a check between the running configuration of the device and the intended configuration. Once the compliance check is completed, we'll be able to see the pending configuration. As seen in the pending configuration, NDFC generates a default route pointing towards the next hop of the IOSXR router. Along with that, it also configures the VRF aware interface on the border device and the power VRF EBGP IPv4 session with the neighboring device. Once we have verified the configuration, simply click on the deploy button. At this point, the VRF light related configuration on the border device of VXLAN eVPN fabric is completed. Next, we will navigate to the external fabric to complete the VRF light configuration on the IOSXR router. Open the external fabric and navigate to the Policies tab. Click on Action and add a policy. Specify the device and pick up a template. From the list of the policies and templates, select the IOSXR base BGP policy. Now provide the BGP ASN and the BGP router ID of the IOSXR router. And then click on Save. Now we will add another policy, click on actions, add policy, select the device, choose a template and this time select the IOSXR external VRF light Jython policy. Specify the layer 3 interface of the IOSXR router where the border device is connected. Specify the dot one q tag which is the matching dot one q tag of the neighboring device. Provide the WORF name and then specify the IP address of the local interface. Optionally edit the MTU and then finally provide the neighbor IP address and the neighbor BGP ASN. By default auto route distinguisher is enabled. If we need to specify a custom route distinguisher, then uncheck this box and provide a custom value in the following field. In this example, we'll be going with the auto RD. Lastly, provide the name of the route policy that will be used for the eBGP neighbor. By default, a pass route policy with the name of allow all is generated. This route policy is applied for both inbound and outbound. Once all the parameters are filled up, click on save. And finally, deploy the configuration on the IOSXR routers. As you can see from the pending configuration, NDFC generates all this configuration and it tries to push on the devices. As you can see, it creates the route policy by default pass, which is applied to the eBGP neighbor both in inbound and outbound direction. At the same time, it also creates the local interface with the dot one q and it's a VRF aware interface. Once the configuration validation is completed, we'll be deploying the configuration by clicking on deploy. So that is all for iOS XR in manage mode. For more information, please visit the following link. Thank you very much.